play itself is something that is necessary for creativity. Again, we find this thought expressed in writers over the century. We had the uh, people who had to walk in order to think. We have the peripatetic philosophers in Greece. We have the lake poets. And almost every thinker, when you look in the diary, you find that they were great walkers. Kierkegaard had something about, I walk myself into my best thoughts. I walk myself into health. There's no, there's no disease I cannot walk away from, no thought so bad that I can't dispose of it by walking. And Thoreau saying, the length of my walking is the length of my writing. At the turn of the century, almost all the uh, faculty members in, in the English uh, colleges were great walkers, took what were called constitutional, seven or eight mile walks. And so again and again, we see this idea that somehow walking opens up the brain, but somehow movement of the body opens up the brain and, and lends itself to, uh, to meditation and creativity. I, I've made a study of these things and I keep picking up uh, mention in Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, in his books he mentions that walking in walking the action is so automatic it frees the mind to do whatever it wants. He speaks about uh, sculling on the Charles. I've always been tempted to try that myself as lending itself to this uh, mental activity. In Emerson we see that walking is excellent for gymnastics of the mind. And so when we talk about this hour for the body, you see that the same hour is for the mind. If you can do something that the body will do automatically so you can dissociate from it. The fitness formula that I spoke of has uh, duration, 30 minutes, uh, intensity, comfortable, frequency four times a week. But then you might ask, well, what is it that I do? In the fitness formula, the first thing, of course, is the mode of exercise. What is the mode of exercise? How, what exercises may I do to get fit? Well, we've learned since 1968 that almost all the effects of fitness activity is on the periphery, it's in the muscle. Now, the heart is the muscle and partakes of this, but the essential changes are in the muscle. Now, therefore, the more muscle you use in the fitness activity, the more fit you will become. And that's why you try to use large muscle groups and preferably, of course, would be in the legs because that's where your largest muscles are. So any activity that uses the legs, large muscles of the legs, continuously for 30 minutes at a comfortable pace will make you fit. And that leaves it only open to your ingenuity. The primary ways of doing that, of course, would be walking, cycling, jogging, swimming, aerobic dancing, uh, rope skipping, cross-country skiing, so you can see any activity that will use these muscles continuously. Now, you might mention tennis. What about tennis? Well, people who put a stopwatch on, tennis players find that they are active five minutes out of the half hour. So if you're going to use a racket sport, you should have a friend clock you with a stopwatch to see how much of that time on the court you're actually in motion. Similarly with golf and other activities. You'll find that uh, when you do a time study on them that the 30 minutes takes quite a bit of time more than as in running and walking and swimming and cycling is virtually continuous.